Hello again, Tara, and welcome back to TCM. Thanks for having me. We just watched The Miracle Woman, which is a pre-code film about religion from 1931 with Barbara Stanwyck. Now we're going to see a very different film from later in the decade with a similar subject matter. It's Boys Town from 1938, starring Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney, directed by Norman Torog. This is a film that we should say did very well with the Academy, won the Oscar for Best Actor for Spencer Tracy, and it really illustrates how the enforcement of the production code changed the way films were made, because this movie is completely the opposite of the coin of, I feel like, what we just saw. This one has the Hollywood sheen on it, for sure. <laughs> it's the story of Father Edward Flanagan, who, who was a real-life man who started a home for wayward boys in Omaha because he believed that there was no such thing as a bad boy. Any young boy could be good if he was shown the right way. Mm -hmm. What's interesting to you about this film? Well, I think this film plays to the judges. <laughs> I mean, the production code was created with Catholic forces um, working with the studio heads. And then when they finally make it enforced in 1934, it's because of a Catholic protest. They had started the Legion of Catholic Decency and they made 10 million Catholics sign a pledge that they would not go to any movie unless the studios cleaned up their act and really promised to st stick to it. And so after five days of that, the studios caved <laughs> and the postcode world began. So. These kind of films that would be about Catholics and Catholic values were just like, you know, one, you know, you're going to get it through Two, goodwill for whatever you have coming down the pike. Oh, I see. But yet Louis B. Mayer had some reservations or decided to shelve this movie. What yeah, happened? He did because he said there's no sex in it. it you know, no one's going to go see it. So Mickey Rooney and Spencer Tracy get together with him, have a little conference, and he agrees to release it. And of course, one of the biggest hits of the year. Wow, how interesting. I mean, when you watch the movie, there's a lot to admire in it. Spencer Tracy's great. The kids, the Hollywood cuteness factor is off the charts, <laughs> Absolutely. which detracts from the gritty realism that they might have been able to accomplish with this film. But I get the sense from what you're saying that it was meant to really appeal to families and you know, the religious audience. It was. There's all kinds of great values that are in this, you know, charity, integrity, teamwork, humility. These are all things that the Hayes office, the Hayes gays mm. would want to see. And it really just it brings it all home. In fact, in Canada, the law said that you couldn't go to the movies under 16 without a parent. And, you know, this positive programming, they changed the law. They changed for the Boys law. Town. Now, is it correct that there was a young boy character in the film who had a stutter and then that character was taken out of the movie? What's behind that story? Well, the Hayes office had received a lot of letters from parents and teachers saying, please stop having characters who have stutters because what was happening is where kids would mimic that. And they said it was uh, seriously detrimental effects. So I assume that that meant bullying and kids getting taunted and made fun of, so they took it out. But what I find interesting is, you know, now, what we know now about representation and the importance of seeing someone like you on screen, mm. you know, you have to, you have to think, well, there was a good reason, but then what was the consequence? Right. Well, it's a really interesting film to watch, particularly because it did win the Best Actor Oscar for Spencer Tracy. So let's take a look. From 1938, directed by Norman Torog, here is Boys Town. Next on TCM, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, then Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and later, The Office Wife. TCM keeps late hours tonight. <laughs>